Siri. Uh -huh. What's the currency in El Salvador? Bitcoin and United States dollar. <laughs> Welcome back to Crash and Eddie. We got a good one for you today, folks. Um, we are going to talk about something near and dear to both Crash and I's heart, and that is protecting investors. And we know that the G is completely in our pond and swimming with us on this one, so... We're going to talk about a number of areas that they take care of us so we don't hurt ourselves. And we're thankful for that. So, Yes, very thankful. Crash, what's going on, man? At least we don't harm ourselves, my friend. Yeah, where are you at today, Eddie? Jeez, oh, Pete. I hear you've been on the road traveling a little bit. Uh, just Zimbabwe. Other than that, we're good. Am I coming in all right? Yeah, you sound great. <laughs> um, all right, let's go over the markets real quick just to give an update. Um, we have, we're going through a correction here that a lot of people are saying, oh, it's a crash. I mean, we're still over 2 trillion people, really? I don't get it. Uh, Bitcoin's about 45, a little below 46,000 right now. A lot of red. The one today that's interesting is Algorand, which is actually up 47%, up to a buck 73. So that's kind of interesting. What are you seeing out there, Crash? Yeah, that and uh, Solana, uh, for sure, is another one that's just been doing really good. Um, you know, and this, this whole downturn that we see uh, in the last 24 hours. Um, I contributed to three things, and it could be the beginning of a FUD campaign as well. Um, you know, you got El Salvador. They, um, you know, they're. Uh, um, I think the SEC probably came out with their lawsuit, or not a lawsuit, came out with their warning to Coinbase about their Lend program. Um, and you know, there's just a lot. They they wanted to cover the news up and put a lot of news out there uh, to squash what they call Bitcoin Day. Uh, the first day of Bitcoin being used as a government currency. Um, and then also, I, apparently, there was a, a whole ton of uh, futures that came due yesterday that got liquidated. Yeah, that's and that's, you know, that's one way that they manipulate the markets is through futures. You know, that's a huge, you know, and that's not even... That's Bitcoin that settles in cash. So keep that in mind, people. And that's why, um, <clears throat> wow, that's a whole other topic we'll get into. But, um, yeah, so it's it's manipulation. And really, if you were smart, all it did is give you more opportunity to to buy because people that are in the know are buying these dips when they occur. It's an opportunity yes. now. Not financial advice. We don't give financial advice on this channel. We are not financial advisors. This is for education purposes only. Hit the like and subscribe, people. Yeah, apparently El Salvador, uh, the country of El Salvador themselves, bought 115 uh, Bitcoin. They're up to 500 Bitcoin in their treasury now that they're going to be giving out to their um, their citizens to help them uh begin to start using Bitcoin as their reserve currency. Yeah, and if we could all, man, if you could see the smile on my face, it's so cool to see these other countries that actually get a legit currency, no matter what it is, that they're not under the thumb of uh, the IMF, really. I mean, that's what this is about. And uh, I think we're going to see more and more countries doing that. We need to have kind of a country watch, you know that, Crash? Yeah, that's a good idea. I know Panama is in the process of doing the same thing with a little bit of a twist. Yeah. Um, what's the twist yeah. now? What, what's your your knowledge about um, the twist they're doing on it? I'm digging deep into my brain right now. I, I, I read it yesterday. Let's see. Yeah, I heard... Uh, uh, they haven't approved it yet, first of all. It's, it's in there, what right. would be our Congress. Yeah. So it's got to get through that. I know that. 
Yeah. Um, um, I, I know Brazil is looking at some stuff oh, too. I know what it was. It's not only Bitcoin, but it's uh, a whole basket of cryptocurrencies or that they're going to uh, allow to be used as uh, reserve. Right. Okay. And that's, I think that's really where we're going, at least for now, is there's going to be the new world reserve currency is many currencies. It's not one. We're not going to a system where, oh, we're going to switch to this. China is going to be the new world reserve currency. The yuan. I don't buy any Mm-mm. of that. I don't either. It's going to be, you know, we're going to go where we're treated best. Yep. And the, your CBDCs are going to be out there and the people that don't know are going to be in those. And hopefully our audience is, is, you know, taking this stuff to heart, doing their own research and learning that, you know, there's huge opportunity here and these are the things you need to be in, you know? So. Yeah. It's funny because just in the last week or two, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people ask me, or comment and say, um, is it too late to get into Bitcoin? Yeah. They, 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 yeah, they don't realize we're still very much in the infancy. Yeah. I, I, you know, everybody, you know, not everybody, but I, I still talk to a lot of people that are completely clueless. They don't know the first thing about it. Any oh. cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah. And they're they've scared. Heard, they've, they've, yeah, right? they've heard Bitcoin and they've heard blockchain, but they have no idea what, any of it means yeah and they're totally being you know just bamboozled with with fear oh don't touch that look at the volatility look at the you know but people are you know they're they're learning and and the printing's not gonna stop they're they're debasing all currency it's clear and they're they want everyone into crypto that that's the deal here but they're getting in first and they're going to make sure. So the people that get in first are the people that are going to seize these opportunities. I mean, this is, it started out being pennies. Now it's dollars. Then it's going to be hundreds and then thousands. I mean, these current cryptos that you're looking at Solana, you brought up, that's going to be over a thousand mm-hmm. bucks. It's just a matter of time. You know, one year ago, it, it's up uh, 6,467% in the last 12 months. Right. Yeah. And doggy coin, doggy coin still crushes that at 9,000% in the last 12 months. Right. So for every dollar you had in there, it would be worth $9,000. Yeah. Yeah, I just, people need to look at quality. There's a ton of quality out there, and all you have to do is touch that stuff. You know, it's hard to justify speculating with a lot of junk when there's just so much quality. So, hey, one note, USDC is up to 28 billion, 28.5. Tether's up to 68.6. Um... So the stable coins and and this is you know very much very much in play now with these stable coins. So, um, which leads us to one thing I wanted to cover with um, Tether. So let's take a look at that real quick here. Don't forget Tether executives allegedly under DOJ investigation for suspected bank fraud. This came out in late July. They're still looking at tether watching them and i think that this is going to be a big i wouldn't call it a black swan event because people are expecting it but it's going to be a big thing where it takes down the market they're going to use this to shake out a lot of people i think at some point they're going to do yeah. that tether yeah. i don't know let's let, let's do a little background on Tether. Can you? Um, I, I know we talked about where they were based. Are, are they actually based in the U.S.? I think they are, aren't they? I don't think they are actually. I think you. Well, then look, how, how can how can the Justice Department come after them then? Because they do activity in the U.S. Yeah, I think is what it is. I think they're actually based out of like hong kong or something i think you looked that up on a number of shows back. yeah i know i yeah I, we did we did i, I can't yeah recall. it's it's not u.s based but okay they yeah. do do business with us and 
<laughs> What's you know the dirty little secret with all these these stable coins? And it came out a couple weeks ago with the USDC coin. It too <clears throat> is not just a hundred percent dollar backed. And no. th- there's going to be a bunch of manipulation with this. It's just like the Federal Reserve and and the rest of them that manipulate through these currencies, and they only want to do it through the currencies that they can do it to. So, whereas if you look, yeah, at that's these where I think we. That, that's where I think we got to go back to, you know, Bitcoin and the fact that it can't be manipulated the way that, that it, um, these these stable coins can. Yeah, it's well, it's interesting the way that they're trying to do it is with futures, you know, so so they can because right. futures are dollar based. So like, for instance, um, there was just an article that came out. Uh, in fact, let me get that real quick here. So, yeah, this is this is an article with Grayscale, okay? And this is um, Grayscale CEO calls for SEC short-sighted after regulators' comments on approval of a Bitcoin e- ETF. And the reason they're mm-hmm. short-sighted is because they want a futures-based ETF versus one that's actually, you know, that holds just spot crypto, spot spot btc yeah yeah that's just all that is is a a a manipulation mechanism it is future yeah it should be illegal yeah so this whole thing is manipulated and they're and it's just like the ripple lawsuit and they're gonna let that go they're gonna hold it down as long as they can and man dai is just going off on this thing it's just it's fascinating to watch the g just go through everything they're going through to cover up all the corruption that's all coming to light. And I don't know how they get continue to get away with it. So we're kind of covering some of this stuff in today's show, you guys, just to, to highlight some of the stuff that is going on and that I think is going to be cleaned up one way or another. I don't think it's going to continue, but I've been amazed at how they can continue to do it. So... Um, but, but yeah, this grayscale thing is just, it's very enlightening and they haven't, they haven't approved an ETF and when they do do it, it probably is going to be a futures based one. And that's how they're going to control Bitcoin is with the futures, you know? Yeah. They're going to try to. That's why in 18, first thing they did get futures on Bitcoin. I mean, it was like an emergency act. Gosh, they really, they had to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. I wonder what Bitcoin would be at right now if that wasn't going on. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch because it is a global currency, and you can do that with. I mean, I guess they do it with commodities, though. I mean, look at gold. Why is gold just hovering at where it's at? It's it's clearly, yeah. I mean, and everyone knows it's manipulated, right? Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, when you're we're, the printing presses are going full speed for the last, you know, ten years. How how can gold be at the price that it is? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah, it's it is. It's uh, so. All right. So what else do we want to check out here? Let's check this quick uh, video here. One second. Okay, this is just from the digital assets twitter feed so it's just one in case you guys haven't seen it it's it's telling it this is how it you mentioned jamie diamond so let's bring it back to jamie and jp morgan i am just i gotta put this out there you guys i am just starting to loathe the gensler i just want to throw that out there hey what do you think is going to be the, the the thing that they will have to change the most or lose market share and somebody else is going to do better, faster, uh, you know, serve their clients better than J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs? Can yeah. In addition to the Howey test, uh, they have this new construct uh, that they're seeing certain things in. So they consider the Bitcoin network uh, and token um, and issuance mechanisms. They consider the Ethereum network token and issuance mechanisms to be be uh, decentralized and uh, therefore no transactions involving those particular assets are considered to be uh, transactions of securities. They have not uh, said the same thing about other tokens, the, the Ripple token for instance, and they uh, 
were clear that they were going to come out with statements to uh, to sort of assess these different tokens, uh, and I believe they've made all the statements about decentralization that, that they're going to make. And so, um, Bill Hinman, Director of Corporate Finance, has been very clear. Uh, you can you can just hear the bankers panicking right now, and then they all line up. And they wrap their arms together and they say, we're not letting this happen. And then it keeps going. And then they say, okay, well, let's, let's go after, let's sue them. Or let's go get the government. The press planning, they plant the press stories. They put out lawsuits. They create as much of a fuss as possible. They try to get their government friends involved. And then they go, oh, God, this thing's happening. Look at Gensler when he's speaking, too. They leave him out. Uh, uh, they cut through some of that stuff. But uh, he, and, and because he is a banker, he's from Goldman Sachs, worked up Who's through the Who's this guy that's talking? Tim Draper. He's a, he's a big Bitcoin. Uh, okay. I don't know what, he, where, what his... I know he's just, uh, he's a venture capitalist, basically, that's huge on Bitcoin. It's just grown into it over yeah, the last Yeah, I've, I've like seen years. him, and I've, I've heard, and I recognize his voice, but I, I didn't I didn't see his name on here, so. But that, that is the nature of the new tech, you know, and it's going to be, it's, and now it's DeFi. Let's shut down, we got it. Now they're coming after uh, Uniswap, right? We got yeah. we got to go after them. We got to shut. Let's look at what we're doing. They you know, they're not going to be able to shut down all of DeFi. I don't I don't see how they can do it, but um it's you know, and it's true. DAI has been touting lately and and, and I totally agree with it. It's get Ethereum through the door. This thing says the plan was to get Ethereum through the door then slam it on the rest of crypto. And that's true. And they think there hasn't been any competition for DeFi really, or for smart contracts until now. Well, why do you think? Why do you? Why do you think they let Ethereum through the door? Probably because they own them. Well, they're all involved with it. They all got their pockets lined. Every one of them, man. I, I'm sure Gensler did too. So, or is it a situation where uh, Ethereum? Um, you know, has a scalability problems that they can use to, uh, again, slow things down if that's the only one out there that they allow to operate. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's a piece of it, yeah. And, uh, well, and Crypto80 said, too, she brought up a really good point the other day that, you know, with Ethereum, because all these tokens are put out on Ethereum, now they can go after everyone. They let Ethereum go through, get all these tokens out there, and now just go through all these tokens. And it's just a, it's just a cesspool of lawsuits, basically, that they can go after. And that's what they do. They sue people, sue companies, and then get money to justify their being. And then slap on the wrist, go along your way, and the appropriate people get their pockets lined along the way. And it's... It's stunning. And we got it's, another video. That's sounds gonna... like extortion. And you mentioned yes, Jamie Dimon, exactly so let's bring it back to Jamie. So let's listen to this other one. This is kind of, uh, this gets into a little bit about, um, well, hold on a second here. Let's get it. Okay, so this is the Money GPS. Um, just have a listen to this. This is about the Fed buying some of the biggest bonds. And basically, the Fed investing in companies. So he'll, he'll get this, but we'll drop a link on this video too. So have a listen. Out. But I wanted to highlight what happened historically here going back to last year. The Fed is buying some of the biggest companies' bonds, raising questions over why. You remember this? I highlighted it on the channel, of course. Corporate American titans such as Microsoft, Apple, and Home Depot have been among the beneficiaries. So the Federal Reserve itself was buying up and is buying up all of the corporate bonds of the biggest companies in the United States. Now, if you look... So just so you guys get this, so the Fed itself is buying the bonds and the Fed presidents are buying the stocks of these companies that are guaranteed. 
And the Congress gets tipped off on all these companies with laws and these rules are going to be made. These And they all do a bunch of insider trading. And in, you know, compared to the total, sure, it's a small number, but that money is ultimately just propping up these companies. And then you have people within the Federal Reserve who are buying up those stocks. And this is something, the collusion, the moral hazard. I mean, there's so many different levels of disaster that this has created. So let's look further into it. Again, they're highlighting Robert Kaplan, but it's going on all over the place. What about what BlackRock is doing? They literally said, hey, the Federal Reserve is going to buy stuff and we're going to help facilitate that transaction. We're just going to mimic what they do. This is unbelievable. Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas President Robert Kaplan made multiple million dollar plus stock trades in 2020. And then you're saying, oh, they're, they're trying to say here that, well, you know, some of the others, they barely did anything. So he's the bad guy. He's been the most outspoken out of all of this, saying that, you know what, maybe we shouldn't be printing all this money. Maybe we should start to slow down on that. But that's besides the point, because they're all in this system together, okay? All right. Now, they, they talk about this. According to the disclosure, Mr. Kaplan had a total of 27 individual stock, fund, or alternative asset holdings, each valued over $1 million. We're talking about Apple, Amazon, Boeing, Alphabet, Facebook, and Marathon Petroleum Corp. Right here, just saying that You've got, uh, you know, over $1 million in 22 individual company shares or investment funds. Okay, looking at this, you can see it in a little bit more detail. They're just covering more of this in, in this article. You know, if, if you want to check it out, I will have all the links in the description, but I'm really interested in getting into the actual disclosure itself. Remember what I said. We are talking about the actual source. I don't give you speculation. I don't give you something you know off the top of my head. I actually show you the source. So take a look at this. My head might be actually, speaking of head, uh, my head actually might be covering this, but I'm going to have the link in the description so you can check it out. Schedule A, reporting individual's name, Robert Kaplan. Looking at the left-hand side column, we are seeing assets and income, and it's just showing you here the value of the assets. So if I scroll like this, this column right in here says over $1 million, okay? And check that out. Look at it, okay? I don't know if you could read all that, but I'll just go down the list. Apple, Alibaba, Amazon, Boeing, Chevron, Delta, and it goes on and on and on, okay? All the companies that you know, all the big ones, sure, he's not the only one that uh, you know, is, is purchasing these stocks, okay? And he's not the only one making really big purchases of these stocks. He realizes what's going on. Maybe he bought them when the market tanked. Maybe he just went in and scooped them all up, but it just shows you the Federal Reserve bailing out the corporations, Federal Reserve members always saying, you know, we really have to help the economy out. Yeah, it, it's the economy we need to help out. We know what's going on here. And the unfortunate part about all of this, the unfortunate part, is uh, something I'll cover in the Money GPS Insights. Let's take a look. The Fed is bailing out these mega corps. These mega corporations, we're talking about trillion dollar companies. And then you have the members of the Federal Reserve buying those stocks. The middle class is evaporating while the totalitarian system is thriving. You could see. Okay, so again, we'll have the link below on that. That's kind of a nice breakdown of what's going on. And it's rampant and it's with everyone. And I'll tell you what, these Fed presidents, in my estimation, are uh, probably in the top 500 wealthiest. That's maybe even the top 200 that control the entire world. Through the Federal Reserve, so just throwing it out there. Yep. So there's that. <laughs> it's just unreal, man. Anyways, um, 
Let's see what else we want to cover to crash. Let's go to uh, let's go to Twitter for just a minute here. Yeah, here's a tweet from Digital Asset Investor. Pay attention. Ethereum has never had smart contract competition. It's very clear from video evidence the SEC is in bed with the Ethereum. XRP has been put in timeout by the SEC. Is it a coincidence that the month that the Flare Nets works is about to release Spark tokens? So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, hang on to what you have because it's all going to shake out eventually. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, you know, it's going to shake out and you want to hold while you can and buy the dips if you can. That's what smart people are doing. So, And, you know, the goal is to shake out all the weak hands so that... And, and they'll bring you in later. Don't get me wrong. Every financial advisor out there is going to be telling you what? You don't have any exposure to crypto in a couple of years when all the yeah. the huge money is, is made. <clears throat> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just a reminder to everybody that uh, the Crash and Eddie uh, Twitter account, uh, please uh, try to subscribe to that if you can or follow it. You can see our little logo down there on the bottom. Yeah. The yellow. Why yep. don't you click on our home? Yeah, there you go. Or click on the uh, icon. Can How do you go to black theme on Twitter, Crash? Black, you know, black theme? Yeah, like where uh, it's the dark theme versus the white theme. Oh. Don't it's know. probably up there where that clock is or something up in the top right somewhere. Yeah, I couldn't see it, but I don't know. Uh, just click, click on our logo. Okay, right. All right, yeah, that, so there's Crash and Eddie. You wow. Can, we... You can subscribe. We'd like to <laughs> get some more vo more followers, huh? <clears throat> no, we don't promote it at all, do we? I don't know. If we no, have we promote, haven't even so. used it, so we'll we'll get better about it. We're going to use it. Yeah, it's a good we're gonna, resource. We're going to start using it. it and really, mo a lot of the people that we know and trust and like are, are followed here by us. And uh, if you want to see who we're following, uh, this is a good place to go, and, and please follow us. Yeah, it's a good it's a good way to communicate. So we'll we'll get better at it and do more of it, just and use it as a resource that it is. So um yeah so hit twitter hit the like and subscribe uh what else we got here crash um let's see i hit we talked about the coinbase uh did we talk we didn't talk a whole lot about el salvador but that's really interesting i think that's uh i'm waiting for some of the eastern european countries to jump on board Right. I think that's going to be huge. If you yeah. can be bordering the e board, uh, border country to the EU and uh, and be using uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as legal tender. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's going to oh, be Oh, you know huge. who's talking about it is Ukraine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you and they don't they're keeping this so quiet, but, you know, Russia's into it. There's no way that they're only using, they're doing, to, they're getting away from the dollar and they're getting into, they're saying um, euro based, euro based assets when they're buying oil and stuff and, and the yuan and stuff. And it's like, really, they're doing nothing with crypto. That's just, it's. Oh, you know, they're buying the heck out of it. It's absolutely a giant cover up to make sure that there's not a mass exodus from fiat currency. That's what this is about. <clears throat> and you know, at the right time, they're going to come out and tell the world that they own, you know, trillions of it. And, it, you know, it could be a catalyst to uh, of flight from fiats. Right. But they're, you know, it, it, it's all timing. This is all timing. These countries are all trying to get themselves into positions for the for the, for the moment where they can uh, uh, financially strike their enemies. Yeah, and they have to be very careful because the IMF runs them. 
it's that simple so they it, you can't go from you know zero support or from a hundred percent support down to zero support you know it's a process so and yeah so fascinating times we're gonna keep following this and just uncover what's going on so that you guys can benefit it to the extent that you want to you got to do your own research and make mm -hmm. critical decisions <clears throat> in a timely manner um, and one thing i was thinking about this morning when i was uh reviewing the coinbase um warning um you know crypto.com is already doing this in the united states on their exchange with uh with their earn program um and it, coinbase is just wants to do what what their competitors are already doing Right. However, Crypto.com is not based in the U.S. It does operate in the U.S. and it's uh, under the, uh, they use the Metropolitan Bank of New York as their, their clearinghouse in the U.S. But, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. There's, there's a whole lot of, I, I think maybe because Coinbase is now listed on the, on the, on the uh, NASDAQ, yeah, and they're the leader. I mean, they're the they're still kind of the global face of crypto. I mean, they're they're in many different countries now and you know, it's it's like it's a it's an attack on DeFi too because it's this is all about them paying interest on crypto. That's the issue here. Um mm -hmm. that's that's what that lawsuit is about. So, it's um yeah, yeah. If you have Coinbase paying four percent interest on on you know stable coins, where you know uh, honestly, there's other places you can go and get double or triple that on stable coins. And but, see, uh, the banking cartel can't the, the, the do the mass. That. Yeah, the, the, the yeah the mass exodus out of fiat to just to, to earn a yield will be unbelievable. Right, and therefore they out of the banking system. That's the issue here. Yeah. We have a bank on every corner in America, and it's all a bunch of corruption. Break it down, people. Break it down for yourself. Dig into it. It's a rabbit hole. The more you go, the deeper you go, the more you're just going to be scratching your head going, wow. So, mm -hmm. fascinating stuff. And there's a reason that the whole system's going to change. And, you know... To the extent that you embrace it, it's it's gonna it, for generations. This is a generational thing, so keep your head on a swivel, people. I think that's it for this show, Crash. You got anything else? Nope. I'm gonna be doing a lot more research. I'm still doing a lot of research on um, privacy and anonymous uh, wallets. Um, so if anybody has questions on that stuff, shoot us a. A comment and we'll go from there yep hit the questions and comments we'll try and do some tokens coming up and get out as much as we can to you guys we're going to do the best we can in the meantime your job is to do your own research and do the right thing <clears throat> enjoy your day and live in the present we're out over now all right Chris. good show today there buddy that was good. That wasn't too bad. We covered some stuff. Good. Let's see if we can. It, You know, it's been like four shows <laughs> since we have <laughs> since we have had an issue with every show. You know, it's always something. So I yeah. think this one was clean. It, it was pretty clean. There was a couple, one, uh, one, one, one or two times on uh, the videos where I didn't hear it, but that doesn't mean it wasn't recording. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about stuff we can say or not say, what we can comment on. Mm. I think we kept it at the right level, so. It's just so hard to not say stuff. It, it is. I'm starting to think, well, wait a minute. Can you say the Federal Reserve? Can we say what mm -hmm. can we talk about? <clears throat> Mass exodus of fiat currency. Yeah, can you say that? <laughs> Not that I would ever do that. I mean, I don't. I, this is just for fun and entertainment, right? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, heck no, I love my cash in the bank. Yeah, absolutely. Bankers makes meetings, me all, that's what it's all about. All and, makes me feel all warm inside. Yep, secure. Oh, yeah. <laughs>